Today I want to share with you the unboxing of my recent Heritage silent movie poster auction purchases from the Dwight Manley auction. And believe me, it's a big one. Let's start with a heavy one, an original one sheet from 1925 for King Vidor's war epic, The Big Parade. This is a really important film, considered one of the best silent films of all time, and the poster is stunningly beautiful. It has such vibrant colors and really rich printing from the stone lithography plates. This poster came out of the Ira Resnick collection, it's featured in his book Starstruck, and it sold at Bonhams in 2017 for 22000 I think that this was one of the best buys of the entire auction. This may be the only known copy of this poster, it is so incredibly rare. Just to put this in historical perspective, this was one of the biggest movies ever made up to this time. So you can't negate in any way the importance of this film just as a movie. This one sheet from 1919, Blind Husbands, marks the directorial debut of Eric von Stroheim. Best remembered today probably for his role in Sunset Boulevard as Max, Norma Desmond's driver and protector. Von Stroheim was one of the great visionary directors of the silent era. I love the artwork on this poster, which completely embodies the theme of the film, and it incorporates the setting of the climax and all the key characters. It's a really great poster. And it made one of the first pictures to make over a million. The people were lined up for blocks to see it. Stroheim was rewarded with complete freedom to direct and star in Foolish Wives. The sets were on the scale of a Griffith epic. Universal City became Monte Carlo. Talk about an epic from 1922, Douglas Fairbanks in Robin Hood. I love the simplicity of this poster with no credits other than the title and Fairbanks name. And it's such a great scene. This was one of the most expensive films of the 1920s and was actually the first film to ever get a Hollywood premiere at the inaugural opening of Grauman's Egyptian Theater. This poster hasn't sold publicly in over 20 years and likely exists in fewer than five known copies. One copy sold at Christie's in 1994 for $23,000. This is a heavy poster. This artwork depicts the closing scene of the film where Robin Hood finally saves Maid Marian. And of course, no silent collection would be complete without representation from the it girl herself, Clara Bow, who really was one of the leading sex symbols of the era. Now, this is like one of her very few talking pictures, but that being said, this 1929 one sheet is just incredibly beautiful. Great stone lithography, great colors. I love the shock of red hair. And I really love Paramount's monotone background one sheets from this era. Now this film here, Money, 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 I don't know much about, but I bought this poster simply because the artwork along the bottom border is really neat. It just shows high society in all its glory characterized along the bottom. Now the Ten Commandments is a beloved picture in many families. That is the Charlton Heston 1956 version. But that was a remake of the great Cecil B. DeMille's 1923 version, which was one of the all-time great epics from the silent era, with some of the biggest movie sets ever created, not to mention the enormous 2300 cast and crew that spent three months on set filming. This is a very important film, and an extremely rare and beautiful one-sheet. Here are a few posters featuring Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, who is one of the most interesting characters in all of film history. He was one of the biggest celebrities in the world in 1920, and one of the highest paid. He mentored Charlie Chaplin, and even brought Buster Keaton into the movie business. But in 1921, Arbuckle was put on trial for the rape and murder of actress Virginia Rappe, who had fallen ill at one of Arbuckle's parties. The media? especially William Randolph Hearst's newspapers, were vicious in their exploitative and exaggerated coverage of Arbuckle's trial, completely destroying his public image and his career. He was acquitted in 1922, but his career could not be saved, and today he's sadly one of the lesser known silent comedians. But as you can see in 1919, he was as well known as the face of the man on the moon. It's interesting to note that in this film, Moonshine from 1919, it also starred the great Buster Keaton, uh, which is an added bonus. 
And yeah, these these fatty Arbuckle posters are just extremely rare. And they have, you know, really great color and great lithography and, and just some really great images of the star himself. Now, Mabel Normand is probably the most famous of the female comedians to come out of the silent era, and I just really wanted some representation of her, and I thought this was a really a wonderful image on a poster. It's not in the best condition, but what can you expect from possibly the only known copy in the world. Now onto this great one sheet from 1924, Picking Peaches, which marks the film debut of the great silent comedian Harry Langdon, who is considered the fourth best comedian of the silent era behind Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Harold Lloyd, making this an important poster. I like how he's billed as the latest and greatest comedy find, and the artwork is stunning, showing miniature divas surrounding him picking peaches. It's really a beautiful poster. I love the colors too in that blue background, it's just awesome. And here's another great Langdon one sheet, His New Mama, also from 1924, and again he's surrounded by bathing beauties, maybe Harry Langdon was a bit of a ladies man. I love the composition of this poster set against that subtle white background, it's a very iconic image and it's got a great mix of colors and it's just very vibrant, nice bright colors. This is a classic Max Senate comedy with tons of madcap stunts, wild car chases, with people flying out of cars, into buildings. This kind of physicality is what silent comedy was all about. Here's another Harry Langdon one sheet from 1925, just one year into his film career. I love circus-themed silent posters, and the artwork on this one is just awesome, uh, showing Harry scrubbing the feet of Anne May, the elephant. Here he plays a guy separated from his childhood sweetheart, only to find out that she's now a bearded lady in the circus. Rough break. Here's another circus-themed poster that pairs beautifully with the last one, Roaring Lions on the Midnight Express. Great title. This is a beautiful and dramatic image, but I don't doubt that this may not actually be an exaggeration of the actual stunts in the film. There seem to be very few safety regulations back then, but it's definitely a stunning poster with great stone lithography and just such a wonderful image. I like too on this poster how you can see that the yellow printing plates were off-centered a little bit. It gives it a cool look. Fox was known for having really great artwork in this era. I don't know much about this particular film, Outwitting the Timberwolf. I just thought it had a cool image. I especially like the look of the wolf howling against the moonlight. Here's a fun college picture from 1926, The Campus Flirt, which is a lost film starring the beautiful Bebe Daniels. Paramount was one of the top studios of the 1920s and their posters were quite significant. I love the famous Paramount monotone background posters from the late 1920s and early 30s. And this is a nice portrait of the flirtatious Winking Daniels. It's got such great depth and texture to the print itself. This really is a work of art. Look at this stamp from the California Film Exchange. The Poster Exchange linen back this poster way back in 1915. This is a neat poster for Across the Footlights produced by Universal Pictures when the studio was just three years old. It's just a historic and early piece. And I love the detailed border design. Look at the slogan for the big U, it's kind of fun. And now as you can see here, this is a very minty folded one sheet for While the City Sleeps Lawn Chaney. Now this particular one sheet was found in the same drawer as the London After Midnight one sheet that sold for like $500,000 or something. Um, but yeah, it was found in a dresser drawer with a handful of other Lawn Chaney one sheets. I also have the West of Zanzibar one sheet from that collection. This is a great gangster image from the Man of a Thousand Faces. Here is an incredible anomaly. An original set of seven stone lithography printing proof one sheets. Now as we know, these stone litho posters were put through the presses four separate times, once each for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And these prints show the various proofs of each color's litho plates. I love how you can see the progression of exactly how the colors come together to form the full composition. 
I have never in my life seen a set of these, which makes these incredibly special. These are an important piece of the history of vintage movie posters. This is a fun early horror themed poster from 1914 showing a guy waking up from a coffin inside of a crypt. This is something that would come straight out of Ron Borst's book. I particularly love that slogan, when his coffin falls from its niche in the wall, Romani returns to consciousness. And now by far my favorite poster in this entire lot, a stunning oversized portrait shot of the great Gary Cooper on this dramatic three sheet for the Legion of the Condemned. Cooper has such an intense look on his face and paired with that slogan, a toast to those who laugh at death, this is such a badass poster. It's beautiful color and it's directed by the great William Wellman who made this as a follow up to the highly successful film Wings a year earlier. Sadly, this is a lost film. Here's another fun Fox poster from 1922, My Friend the Devil. I've always been drawn to this title for some reason. One could say it's a bit of a horror theme. And all the posters are so dramatic and cool. I like the sinister look of the devil and the gothic style design of the windows. This is now a lost film and this is likely the only known surviving example of this poster. Here's a three sheet from 1916 for East Lynn featuring the original vamp or seductress, Theta Barra, one of the most popular movie starlets of the 1910s. I really like the lettering and typography on this poster. You can see when you look up close, there's a lot of hand embellished elements. It has a really cool look. Again, this is likely the only known copy of this poster. And last, but definitely not least, the biggest poster in this lot, the enormous six sheet poster from 1917 for Cecil B. DeMille's The Little American, starring the biggest female silent movie star of all time, America's sweetheart, Mary Pickford. As you can see, this is a stunning stone lithograph with such fine detail and beautiful color. It's amazing on such a large poster that every inch of it has so much texture. I first saw this poster at the entryway to Dwight Manley's exhibit at the Bria Gallery where it made a big impact. And like many others in this video, this is the only known surviving copy of this important poster, which stands nearly seven feet tall. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching.